Hello, welcome to Gaming Instincts TV, and this is Tristan Reyes. Mortal Kombat 11's Crypt is a place where players can gather chests in order to gain unlockables for their characters. This time around, you play as the Traveler, who came to Shang Tsung's island for unknown reasons. After Shang Tsung greets you, he gives you two free chests containing 50,000 coins and 100 hearts each. After that, you are free to explore his island. The very first item you'll encounter is Shao Kahn's hammer. As you can imagine, it can destroy certain walls and gates. This will come in handy for the rest of your stay, as several things in the island need a proper whacking. In front of you, you can destroy a broken gate and a crumbly wall to your right, which will take you to the Deadwoods. The Deadwoods has several soul spires strewn about. Unless you have a certain amulet, you can't interact with them. There's also a particularly big soul vault within the trees that costs 10,000 soul fragments, which contains an end source cell gem of trapped souls, which is used to craft an amulet later on. Follow the path and there should be a flaming chest, which requires you to destroy a lantern under the gazebo with scorpion spear, which you don't have at this point. Also near the entrance is a Shao Kahn chest. Near the end of the forest right next to the bridge towards the gazebo area is the pillar puzzle with three levers in front of it. The main goal is to either match up the demon or Sector's robot body. The lever on the left moves all three pillar parts, the middle lever moves the top two parts, and the right lever moves the bottom two parts. The puzzle is fairly simple and doesn't need a whole lot of explanation. Just don't match a skeleton or else it'll set up a trap. If you're successful, you gain access to a Shao Kahn chest. To the left of entering the courtyard is Chronica's Time Vault, which can be used to reset any used chests and fills them back up again. Also next to this is a wall you can break, with a Shao Kahn chest on the other side and another breakable wall. More importantly, you can hit the gong in the area to open the gate linked to the forge and the pit bridge. Now you can head out and visit the forge. Hang straight out of the courtyard through the recently opened gate will take you to the forge. You can combine forge items in order to create something more useful, like consumables and key items for the crypt. These will cost some coins and souls, so make sure you have enough money. The forge will only use up items if they actually create something. Recipes that are found in chests will tell players exactly what they need, though it's still random when you find one. If you go up to the pit bridge, you'll see that you need 2,000 soul fragments to fix it. This will lead to a locked door leading to a Shao Kahn chest. Take the one bridge to the right, and in the middle is a door which requires a dragon amulet to open. So ignore it in the meantime and continue on the bridge. At the end, you'll encounter a twisted tree pointing to the shrine. The shrine requires money, and you probably have a lot of it. For the first time, just pay 1,000 coins and you'll automatically get Kronika's amulet. You'll need this for a later puzzle, so keep it safe. To the left of the statue is a path that leads to a closed gate. Head down a bit more and you'll find a dragon puzzle with three levers to rotate the pieces. Simply enough, pull the left lever once, and pull the one on the right twice to finish it quickly. If you mess up, don't worry. It's all about just rotating the pieces. Once this is done, you will get some coins and soul fragments. You'll also open up the previously closed gate and a bridge that requires you to destroy two lanterns with Scorpion Spear. Also down the path from the puzzle are a flaming chest and a Shao Kahn chest. When you're done here, head straight out past the Money Shrine and head out towards the Warrior Shrine. Immediately entering the area, you'll notice large statues of Mortal Kombat characters to your left. A cutscene will play where a volcanic rock destroys Raiden's statue. If you hit the rock with your hammer, you will be given a gem of the living. If you want to fix a statue, just clear the tutorial towers in the Towers of Time to gain the amulet of Earthrealm's Protector. If you do this, you can interact with Raiden's statue and you will gain Raiden's Shattered Staff. This will be used to open up a door later on. Head behind the statues and hit the gong on your right side and you will open up the other gate back to the courtyard here. Also, there's spikes across from the statues you need to place characters' heads on. In order to get a head, you need to do 50 fatalities on a certain character in the towers. The only head you need is Cetrion's head in order to get Cetrion's amulet. Also, there's a puzzle involving a Shao Kahn chest stuck clearly behind a gate, and further down to the sacrifice is a puzzle involving an empty lantern. You'll have to return here later since you lack any of these items. Go back to the area where you rang the first gong and open the door to your left using the Gem of the Living. This will lead you to the gardens. There's a flaming chest and a Shao Kahn chest here, and if you hug the left side, you can see a wooden door that needs to be broken down to enter the vault. This is a short and small area containing two levers. The lever to the left will open up a shortcut to the palace entrance, while the lever to the right opens up the vault. Within the chambers are some chests along with the cracked horn of Motoro, which you'll need to open up Goro's lair near the Warrior Shrine. The entrance to Goro's lair is short, but contains a few chests locked behind some locked doors. Head down the elevator and you'll enter Goro's Great Hall. 
To your right is the door of the One Being, which you will need 3 fragments of the One Being for. You need to perform 10 fatalities, 10 brutalities, and 10 mercies in the towers to get the mind, heart, and soul of the One Being. Behind the door are some traps, some locked doors, and 80,000 coin chests which contains the Heart of Blaze that can be used to solve the sacrifice puzzle later. To the left of the entrance of the Great Hall is a door you can open using chains beside it. To the right before entering the collector's room is a locked door that contains an elevator leading back to the palace entrance. The collector's room may contain the collector. Sometimes he won't be there, but if you have a collector's coin consumable, you can call him immediately. Goro's throne room contains several entrances. To your left facing the throne is Goro's dining hall. And to your right are two entrances. The one to the right behind Goro leads to the armory, while the other entrance leads to Goro's treasure chamber. Taking the entrance link to the armory will lead you to a small hallway containing a flaming chest. Continue on and you can easily open the gate to the actual armory. Straight ahead is Scorpion Spear, which you can use to destroy lanterns and grab hanging dead bodies for extra hearts. You can also put out flaming chests by destroying the lantern associated with it. They're usually nearby while some are cleverly hidden. After grabbing a spear, you will be trapped, but a lantern you can destroy right above the gate will open it again. You can also destroy the lantern near the flaming chest in the hallway in order to open it. If you head straight to the other entrance near the hallway to the armory, you can head towards Goro's treasure chamber. The room simply contains several artifacts from previous characters in the series. You can't do anything with them, but they do provide a lot of lore. If the player heads out further, they enter the jails. The room here is filled with both chests and pools of blood. Occasionally an angry spirit will come out to scare you, but that's it. Further down the way, you'll come across Kenshi's last stand. It seems that Kenshi was battling a legion of Oni before dying. If you interact with him, you can grab Kenshi's blindfold. With this new item, you can find secret treasure chests, hidden breakable walls, and encounter angry spirits. Unfortunately, it will deplete a couple of soul fragments with every use, so don't keep it on for too long. The entrance will close on you, and you have to use the blindfold to break open the hidden wall in the room. That way, you can head back to Goro's throne room, and head straight, open the gate, and then head to Goro's dining hall. The dining hall is big, and full of chests. If you head towards Goro's statue, you can wrap around the opposite side on the second floor and destroy a lantern to get the flaming chest near the entrance. To the left of the statue is a locked door, leading to a room full of traps. Straight south of that is an entrance linked to the Chamber of Suffering. Southwest of that entrance is an elevator that will take players to the lower pit. Straight ahead, entering the new jail area is obviously a blank wall that needs a blindfold to destroy. Here, you can use the elevator to take you up to the lower part of the courtyard. This new area contains several chests, including a Shao Kahn chest. To the left, entering the jail area, is the Chamber of Suffering, which requires a skeleton key to open. The chamber has several chests, including one Shao Kahn chest. In Goro's Dining Hall, just go to the southwest corner and open up the gate with the chains. Along the path is a Shao Kahn chest, and an elevator taking you to the lower parts of the pit. As soon as you enter, Ermac will fall down and land on some spikes. Take Ermac's amulet of souls from his body. This will allow you to finally interact with the green glowing soul vault for some souls. You can also interact with anything else that glows, such as the cave that happened recently behind you with Ermax amulet. Also, there's a dead body in one of the gargoyle's mouths, a flaming chest, and a Shao Kahn chest sitting between the two fires. Have a couple of skeleton keys ready, and head north of Goro's statue in the dining hall. Use a key on the door, and traverse the traps. You could die here, so watch out for the swinging axes. If you get past the first set of blades, you can walk back out to the dining hall by pulling the chain, which will, tempor which will temporarily stop the blades from spinning. After continuing down the second set of spinning blades, look for a locked door with a seemingly empty room. If you put on your blindfold, you can see that there's something behind the room's wall. Open up with a skeleton key, and you can find a secret room with a few chests, a Shao Kahn chest, and a statue. If you interact with the statue, you'll encounter a reptile. Reptile will now appear in several different areas of the island, including the palace entrance, the courtyard, or just around Goro's lair. You can only see him if you put on Kenshi's blindfold, and additionally you can hear him dig around. If you whack him with your hammer, you can get a unique scorpion outfit. Now back outside, you'll see a silhouette of a man behind bars. To the left of him is the entrance to Goro's fortress, and to the right of the entrance is the Kind Hive. To enter the fortress, use Ryan's Shattered Staff on the door to open it up. You can see that the room's full of traps, lava, and more importantly, chests. While you can move forward and go straight to the fortress treasure chamber to pick up a Shao Kahn chest, the area to the left contains a lone chest worth 20,000 coins. Grab this and you'll get the Dragon Amulet Keystone, which is used to open up the door on the mountain pass. The Kind Hive is pretty straightforward. The spires lurking around will try to kill you with their fire. If you're fast enough, 
you can hit them before they burn you. You will gain a Devora skin, and will have a chance to get an Ensorcelled Eye of a Dragon, which you'll need to craft Shinnok's amulet. Additionally, you can attack spires on the walls and ceilings with Scorpion Spear. Aside from spires and being burned alive, there's a Shao Kahn chest and a flaming chest near the end. With a Heart of Blaze and Scorpion Spear, you can complete the sacrifice. All you have to do is lower the giant lantern, put the Heart of Blaze in it, lift it back up, and hit it with Scorpion Spear. You'll then have access to the two chests locked behind the gates. After you're done with this puzzle, head to the building right outside. The puzzle seems to require that you pull four chains in order to open up the gate leading to the Shao Kahn chest. If you have Kenshi's Blindfold, you can find the other chains on the pillars nearby. Activate them, and you can grab your prize. Head back to the mountain and use the Dragon Amulet on it. You can now interact with a simple puzzle with tough requirements. You need Chronica's amulet from the you need Chronica's amulet from the money shrine, Shinnok's amulet from the forge, and Cetrion's amulet from putting her head on a spike. Shinnok's amulet must be built at the forge using an Ensorcel Demon's Heart from hanging dead bodies, Ensorcel Dragon's Eye from killing spiders, and the Ensorcel Gem of Trapped Souls found in the Dead Woods. Found in the Dead Woods. After this is done, head deep into the Kind Hive to claim more chests. Well, I hope this guide was helpful to you, and I'll see you soon. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like, subscribe if you want, and make sure you check out our website at GamingInstincts.com for more gaming content from an unbiased perspective.